The first thing to understand about modernism is that modernism and modern are two different things. Whereas modern typically refers to things that are current and up to date, the term modernism refers to an era of art, generally speaking, the 20th century, and the kind of art that mainstream artists were interested in during that time. It refers to a new approach to art that grew up in the 20th century that was different than the Renaissance era approach. This new approach started with the Impressionists, a group of artists in the late 1800s who wanted to do their own thing and not paint in the realistic way as they did in the Renaissance. In the 1890s and early 1900s, Impressionism was followed by Post-Impressionism. This style tended to go further than the Impressionists in flattening out the picture plane, making the colors more intense, and using marks and shapes. It also tended to go further in exploring the inner self of the artist. The three main artists of the post-Impressionist era were Paul Gauguin, Vincent van Gogh, and Pierre Bonnard. These three artists were instrumental in establishing the new approach that evolved into modernism. After the post-impressionist, the next step was an approach dubbed Fauvism. Fauvism meant wild beasts, and the artists that used this approach were dubbed that because of their use of strong color. As time passed, two artists emerged who laid the foundation for the era known as Modernism. They were Henri Matisse and Pablo Picasso. They both built on the ideas of the post-impressionists, but went even further, flattening out the picture plane even more than the post-impressionists and abstracting the form. Both Picasso and Matisse pushed art into new domains. This laid the foundation for many artists that were to follow and began the era known as modernism. Some believe this change in approach represented a change in artists' attitude from an external, rationalistic, and materialistic approach to an interior, more emotional approach. Another artist who must be credited with laying the foundations for abstraction was Hilma Hoff Klint. Like Matisse and Picasso, her work was involved with flatness and abstraction. Wassily Kandinsky was another artist who was important in laying the groundwork for 20th century modernism. Like Matisse and Picasso, Kandinsky explored abstraction, and many people credit him with being the founder of non-representational painting. Another important artist who helped to lay the foundation for modernism, along with Matisse, Picasso, Off Klint, and Kandinsky, was Marcel Duchamp. Duchamp went further than any other artist in challenging people's notions of what art was. He experimented with Cubism, one of the first major art movements of the modernist era. He also challenged people's ideas about art 
by using found objects and calling them art. He called these works ready-mades. In 1915, Duchamp made the first transparent painting. This painting effectively blurred the distinction between sculpture and painting and opened up avenues for expression that hadn't existed before. We could say that modernism begins with Matisse, Picasso, Ofklint, Kandinsky, and Duchamp and breaks down to a number of movements and approaches and through the rest of the 20th century up until around the abstract expressionist in the late 40s. However, modernism describes a time period and a certain approach to art. All the different approaches that take place in the 20th century, cubism, futurism, suprematism, constructivism, surrealism, and so forth, are all part of the modernist era. Cubism itself originated in Paris between 1906 and 1908 and was the creation of the Spanish painter Pablo Picasso and the French painter Georges Braque. The era of Cubism lasted from 1906 to around 1921. Once begun by Picasso and Braque, within four years other artists around Europe and America were also doing Cubist paintings. Often cited as the first Cubist painting, Picasso's painting of 1907 was called Demoiselle d'Avignon. Clearly influenced by Cezanne and Gauguin, Picasso simply went further. Where Cezanne used planal structure to construct form, Picasso deconstructed. Where Gauguin flattened out, Picasso flattened out even more. The one artist who recognized and quickly understood what Picasso had achieved in De Moselle was Georges Braque. He had been a Fauvist, but once he saw Picasso's De Moselle, he switched to Cubism. Brock began painting nudes a la Picasso, but soon gave that up and changed to landscapes a la Cezanne. The landscape motifs are Cezanne-esque, but Brock did not allow the landscape to impose itself on him. Instead, he kept his own vision and cubism as his constant goal. And for a while, he and Picasso were the only two artists working with this approach. Juan Gris is another artist who can be considered one of the primary Cubists. He began painting Cubism around 1910-1911. Gris' paintings are fairly typical of the Cubist approach. Generally speaking, however, it can be said that Gris, along with the more subdued and earthy tones Cubism usually used, brought a stronger, more vibrant sense of color. Overall, Cubism's approach was to fragment form for the sake of two-dimensional design. Straight and slightly curved lines were often used to divide the form into fragmented parts which were then worked into in different ways. Futurism was born in Italy in 1909 and ran concurrently with Cubism. It was all about speed and movement. Perhaps the most important of the futurists was Alberto Baccioni. Baccioni's paintings were filled with the stated goal of futurism, movement expressed through sequence. They were also filled with luscious, wonderful color. Giacomo Bala was another very important futurist artist.
His painting of the running dog is humorous, fun, and expresses Futurism's concept of movement captured in still painting. Around 1912, both Brock and Picasso began innovating with a new technique. This technique was called collage and involved gluing pieces of paper of different sorts directly to the painting. This was a completely new technique invented in the modernist era and led to new possibilities with Cubism. By 1920, Kurt Schwitters was taking collage much further using found objects, pieces of wood, and other paraphernalia. In the 1920s, Cubism and Futurism began to fade. Artists like Malevich and Mondrian, who had experimented with Cubism, began to explore new directions. They began to experiment with abstraction through pure, minimalistic geometry. Mondrian, after some forays with Cubism, developed a highly personal style of geometric abstraction, which set a standard for geometric painting that was to take place in the second half of the 20th century. In the 20s and 30s, modernism began to follow a couple of different threads. Artists were experimenting to find out just what art could be. Even artists with a figurative and representational bent got into the spirit of things. André Messon experimented with automatism, that is, stream of consciousness painting, just putting down marks, lines, shapes as they occurred to you spontaneously, somewhat like doodling with a capital D. This was more than likely inspired by the movement of Dadaism, yet was an attempt to explore more deeply into the consciousness of human beings. This idea led many artists to experiment with randomness, dream imagery, and with what seemed illogical. This approach attracted many artists because of its freedom and somewhat iconoclastic approach, and surrealism was formed. Merritt Oppenheim covered a teacup with fur. Max Ernst invented strange, illogical beings and environments. Frida Kahlo did her own surrealistic take on portraiture. René Magritte brought dry English humor. And Salvador Dali, perhaps the most well-known of the Surrealists, brought his own inimitable touch. Artists experimented with abstraction in sculpture as well. Brancusi and Arp brought modern materials and new forms to bear through modernism. Modernism was a dream come true and gave artists a freedom to express themselves in a multitude of ways. Standing on the pedestals of innovation erected by the Impressionist, Post-Impressionist and Fauves, the Modernist, led by Matisse, Picasso, Kandinsky and Duchamp, reached new heights of expression and expressive freedom. Artists who felt confined by old techniques and styles of the past could now pursue art in a way which matched their new ways of thinking, feeling, and conceptualizing.
the 20th century had a new kind of art. And for the most part, during the rest of the 20th century, in many different ways and styles, artists explored flatness and abstraction, the two new ways of making art. They were excited by this new approach to art. It offered a new and more expansive vista for artists to express themselves. 